Good afternoon, everyone. Have a listen to this. I learned how to rap hot on the blacktop. Black thought was my mascot. And I'm not abusive, but I do make a few hits on the charts, leave a mark like bruises without the new whips, just to cut a real music. This is for my who kid, DJs who dig, pulling out wax like Q-tips, finding loops that's sick as Mr. Q-tips. The new Bismarck, this kid's stupid, but spit sharp like toothpicks on an all-inclusive cruise ship. As my crew sips on a cocktail like that cruise flick, like clockwork. Now the other cube brick, eyes wide shut. Bye bye, bucks. I'm all in, in the game. Let me try my luck. Now I'm living off shook dice, dreams of the good life. Hanging by your foot like dudes working for Shook Knight. Books. Let's start our talk today with a little poll. If you were feeling that track with your body, like if you were nodding your head along to the beat or tapping your toes, can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand if you were feeling that track? Great, okay. Can you keep your hand up if you were also tuned in to the lyrics of that verse? Like, if I asked you to repeat back a clever simile or a bit of figurative language or just a memorable part, you could, you could recite that back to me. You were tuned in to the lyrics. Perfect. That difference forms the basis of our time together today. I believe there are two types of people in the world people that casually listen, and those that really hear, that are tuned in to the music we listen to every day. And what category we fall into can have a profound impact on our social lives, our mental health, and our worldview. On the surface, listening and hearing might seem the same, but there's a difference. And this difference was best articulated in the 1992 cinematic masterpiece White Men Can't Jump, by director Ron Shelton, which also could be an allegory for my skills on the basketball court, but that's probably a different conversation. In the film, Woody Harrelson plays a character named Billy, and Wesley Snipes plays a character named Sidney. And they are riding down the road listening to Jimi Hendrix's classic rock ballad, Purple Haze, in Billy's car. And as Billy air guitars the famous licks of the, of the song, and stumbles across the lyrics. Sidney quips, I know you can listen to Jimmy, but can you hear Jimmy? He implores Harrelson's character to go deeper, to connect to the soul of the song through the lyrics. Our goal in the next 10 minutes is to travel further across this continuum towards a more tuned in collective of music lovers. The impact of this subtle shift might surprise you. The first and perhaps most important reason to tune in to the lyrics of the songs we listen to every day is not looking stupid in front of your friends, your colleagues, and maybe even your children. A 2014 poll published in the Telegraph newspaper found that the songs that are often misquoted, and in fact most misquoted, are also some of the most famous songs, the songs that we sing along to every day. One example would be ABBA's Dancing Queen. See that girl, watch her scream, kicking the dancing queen. The real lyrics here in green are much less brutal than that. Queen's 1977 hit, We Will Rock You. You got mud on your face, big disgrace, kicking your cat all over the place. These misheard lyrics could be an affront to animal lovers everywhere. And the Jimi Hendrix track from the White Man Can't Jump scene, acting funny, but I don't know why. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Two very different sentiments expressed here. Along the same vein, but perhaps on a deeper level, some of the most popular songs we listen to contain lyrics that might surprise you. The 71 rock classic, Brown Sugar, by the Rolling Stones, which was playing during the break, if you caught it, contains this verse. Gold Coast slave ship bound for cotton fields, sold in a market down in New Orleans. Scarred old slaver knows he's doing all right. Hear him whip the women just around midnight. Brown sugar, how come you taste so good? Brown sugar, just like a young girl should. How many times have we listened to this song and heard these lyrics and not realized the sentiments that they possess? Another more recent example that was also playing during the break 
is the 2010 global phenomenon Pumped Up Kicks by Foster the People. This is a song about a student that plans and carries out a school shooting. And this fact became evident to me last year in this very space when that song was accidentally played as exit music during one of our assemblies. And as I looked up into the crowd, worried about the message we were sending to 450 students, their parents and teachers, all I saw were 450 teenagers dancing along, nodding their heads, singing the chorus, or just completely oblivious. These cases illustrate the importance of really tuning in to the music we listen to, lest we sp support perspectives that are dangerous or downright shocking. I'm a lover of hip-hop music, and I often hear criticisms of this genre, that it's about bass, bling, misogyny, and violence, but I believe these perspectives are promulgated by those that listen but don't really hear it. So what I'd like to do during our time together is I'd like to illustrate the brilliance of hip-hop by taking a moment to deconstruct the verse we started our time with. The rapper that was laying down that verse is named Shad. He's a Canadian rapper. And I want to just quickly thank him for giving me permission to use his songs today. Whips, just to cut a real music. This is for my who kid, DJs who dig. Pulling out wax like Q-tips. Finding loops that's sick as Mr. Q-tips. So let's jump into this musical genius here. He starts with, this is for my Who Kid DJs. This is DJ Who Kid, he's an actual DJ, and he's known, you can kind of tell by the top of his Run DMC hoodie, he's known for pulling out samples and loops out of 80s and early 90s hip hop to use today. So he says, this is for my Who Kid DJs who dig. And here he uses kind of a double entendre. He's saying, who dig, like, I dig it, I understand it, it's cool. And DJs who dig for records in crates. So this is for my Who Kid DJs Who Dig, pulling out wax. In this case, he's referring to records, a slang term for records in hip hop, and probably other genres is wax. So he says, this is for my Who Kid DJs Who Dig, pulling out wax. Then he uses kind of a gross simile, like Q-tips. Pulling out wax like Q-tips. But he uses it as a bridge to tie in finding loops that sick as Mr. Q-tips describing Q-Tip, who is one of the founding members of the classic hip-hop group, A Tribe Called Quest. So he says, this is for my Who Kid, DJs Who Dig, pulling out wax like Q-Tips, finding loops that sick as Mr. Q-Tip. Q-Tips, the new Bismarck, this kid's Win. stupid, but spit sharp like toothpicks on an all-inclusive cruise ship. Here he says, I'm the new Bismarck. This kid's stupid. He's referring to Bismarck Key, who's known as the clown prince of hip-hop. His raps are always very funny. Uh, and so he's saying he's the new Bismarck. This is Shad right here. He's saying, this kid's stupid. Like, this kid's off the wall. He doesn't mean unintelligent. He just means outside of the box. This kid's stupid. Then he says, I spit sharp like toothpicks. And here he uses the term spit as a slang term for rap. So basically saying, I spit sharp means that I'm a good rapper. How sharp are my raps? Sharp like toothpicks. Then he ties it into, on an all-inclusive cruise ship as my crew sips. And here he uses the word crew as a double entendre, as in the crew on a cruise ship that might serve you drinks, and my crew, like my friends, my people. So he says, the new Bismarck, this kid stupid, spit sharp like toothpicks on an all-inclusive cruise ship as my crew sips. On a cocktail, like that cruise flick, like clockwork, now the other cube rig, eyes wide shut, bye bye buck some. This is probably the most genius line of the song. He says, as my crew sips on a cocktail, so he's tying it back to the cruise ship and the toothpicks. He's like, as my cruise ships on a my cruise sips on a cocktail, like that cruise flick, referring to the film cocktail with Tom Cruise. Like clockwork, he's referring to the film Clockwork Orange by Stanley Kubrick. Like clockwork, nah, the other Kubrick, Eyes Wide Shut, which is a Kubrick film that Tom Cruise stars in as well. And then he finishes it off with a line from Dr. Strangelove, Bye Bye Buck, which Stanley Kubrick also directed. As my cruise sips on a cocktail, like the cruise flick, like clockwork, nah, the other Kubrick, Eyes Wide Shut, Bye Bye Buck. I'm all in the game, let me try my luck. Now I'm living off Shug Dice, dreams of the good life. Hanging by your foot like dudes working for Shug Knight. Books heavy like... Now this one's for my real hip-hop heads in the audience. This is a good one. Okay, he says he's all in the game. All in referring to like in poker when you put all your chips in. 
you're completely committed to the game. In this case, the game is the rap game. So he's all in the game. He wants to try his luck. Okay? He's got dreams of the good life. He's living off shook dice, so he's back to the idea of dice in the game. But then he really takes it to the next level. I think English teachers will appreciate this as well. He says, I'm hanging by a foot. In this case, the foot he's referring to is not the foot on your feet. It's a foot, which is a measure of rhythm. Uh, you might remember it from your study of sonnets in Shakespeare. It's actually one half of an iamb. It is the way that poets can measure rhythm. So he says he's hanging by a foot, meaning that the only way he's able to stay in the rap game is his ability to write rhymes. He's hanging by a foot. Like dudes working for Suge Knight. A Suge Knight was the CEO of Death Row Records. If you know Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Tupac, the beginning of gangster rap on the West Coast, and you might have seen the recent film Straight Outta Compton. Suge Knight once held vanilla ice off of a balcony by his feet to extort record uh, royalties from him in the early 90s. So he says he's hanging by a foot like dudes working for Suge Knight. It is lyrical genius. Consider the sheer volume of this lyrical genius in music we listen to every day if just this snippet of a relatively lesser known song has this level of clever references, figurative language, and brilliant wordplay. If we're not tuned in, we're missing out. Matt Daniels, a visual data guru, applied a, a sampling technique called token analysis. What Matt did is he took the first 35,000 words that Sh William Shakespeare wrote in his plays. He actually took the first seven plays and the first 5,000 words out of each just to make sure he got a nice sample. Then he took the first 35,000 words of Herman Melville's classic Moby Dick. In those samples, he found that Shakespeare had about 5,000 original words, 5,000 different words, and Melville had about 6,000. And then Daniels took about 100 rappers and took the first 35,000 lyrics they wrote and measured against Shakespeare and Melville. And what he found was that there are about 20 to 25 rappers, about a fourth of that sample, that have the same level of original wordplay and lyrical complexity as Shakespeare and Melville. As the data illustrates, if we're not tuning in, we're missing a lyrical education akin to the masters of prose and fiction that we learn about in school. The brain research on tuning into lyrics is also very interesting. Our long-term memories are stored in a part of the brain called the hippocampus, and it's influenced by proper maintenance of our working memory. A recent Vanderbilt University study found a clear link between attention to detail and improved working memory. The implications being that those that tune into lyrics are flexing their working memory and thus improve their ability to store long-term memories both in musical and in other contexts. Also, a team of researchers from Leipzig recently found that simply listening to the songs we listen to all the time without really tuning in caused our neurons to process the same stimulus over and over again. This caused our neural pathways to decrease in their responsiveness over time. Actually processing the lyrics, however, activated more complex pathways in different parts of our brain. In these ways, focusing on lyrics can actually improve your brain's ability to tune in to the detail around you every day and remember it. As Rick Hansen states in his book, Buddha Brain, attention is knowing or being with something without trying to change it. This is something that does not usually come naturally or automatically to us. Our attention is filled with judgment and distraction all the time. I would like to invite you to practice tuning in and focusing on the detail of the music you love. As Samler's research suggests, simply practicing, simply tuning in and focusing our attention to lyrics can strengthen our neural pathways. Now, while tuning in to lyrics can help us avoid social faux pas and expand our vocabulary, and maybe even improve the way our brains work, the stakes might be higher than that. I wonder if the idea of listening without really hearing is a metaphor for our society today. Are we collectively missing out on our nuanced reality and the challenges and opportunities we face as a species 
because we're mindlessly dancing along to the beat and chiming out the chorus instead of making an effort to truly engage with the detail and complexity of our times? Are we tuning out instead of tuning in? Are we kicking our cat all over the place into oblivion? The very next time you put on your headphones, I invite you to do more than listen. Tune in to the lyrics. This might not only rock your world, but it may change ours for the better. Thank you.